Earlier this spring, we talked with Wayne State University President Dr. M. Roy Wilson about the pandemic and its impact on the school and students and faculty. Matters of public health uh, get Dr. Wilson back to his roots as an epidemiologist. So now with schools from kindergarten to grad schools mapping out their plans for the fall, I thought it was a good time to check in again. And Wayne State President M. Roy Wilson joins us now via Zoom. President Wilson, good to have you back again. I'm wondering now, it's been about a month and a half, I believe, since you and I last spoke. I'm wondering what you feel like we now know about the virus as we keep learning a little bit more about it. Uh, do you feel more comfortable with uh, what this is that we're wrestling with, or is it as mysterious as ever? I, I think it's as mysterious as ever. I mean, you know, certainly we're learning more things all the time, but some of the things we're learning are, are new. For example, you, know, you heard the case uh, just last week about three uh, uh, triplets, I think, that um, uh, was born uh, with COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, and then you know, early on, we thought that young people, college age people, uh, and a little bit older were less likely to get it. You know, Now we know that that demographic is just as susceptible as uh, any other age group for getting this uh, virus. Now their their course may not be as as um, as bad. Uh, they don't tend to get as sick. But in terms of actually getting the vi virus, those in their late 20s and in early 30s are, are getting it just as frequently as uh, some of the older uh, people. Well, and as we now watch universities who really, obviously we all understand that the campus culture is a big part of the university experience. I understand the rush. Everybody wants to have people back on campus and we've seen quite a few schools announce exactly that. Most of them in our state. Your plan is gonna be coming up in about uh, uh, two weeks or so, July 15th on exactly what's gonna happen at Wayne. But are you worried that people are um, making plans right now that look a little hasty given that we just had uh, the largest uh, day of cases this past week that we've seen since about back in April. I am, and there's a, uh, a university back east, I, I won't name it, that um, just within the past eight days uh, uh, has 79 uh, confirmed cases so <laughs> their students getting yeah. um, uh, COVID-19. And this is the summer, this isn't even real, the, uh, the school year, but 79 in eight days. I mean, that's, uh, that's a, a huge number. So I, I am a bit concerned, and, and that's why we've been um, uh, very measured and have um, I said from the very beginning that we weren't going to make any definitive decisions until this, as late as possible based on the science and based on the public health at that time. And the latest possible for us means probably uh, mid-July, mid and that's why we picked uh, July 15th. Um, you know, luckily, uh, Detroit and Michigan in, in general, but Detroit specifically has been doing a lot better than uh, some other parts of the uh, country. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got hit pretty hard initially, but, um, you know, a lot of states now are, are experiencing what we experienced in April, and we are definitely have had uh, 9, 10, uh, 11 weeks of um, uh, decreased uh, cases, decreased deaths, and uh, percent positivity is uh, certainly going in the right direction also. So um, that augurs uh, well for us being able to be a, a little bit more aggressive than we would have thought uh, probably, you know, a month and a half ago when I first spoke to you. But even that, you know, we're still being very, very cautious. Well, I, I'd like to ask you, so I'm, I'm, I've been asking everybody with any expertise in this field, this the, a question though about Michigan's mortality rate, which is so much higher than just about any place else we can find in the country, somewhere between uh, nine and 10%, uh, rather than the less than 1% that we generally expect to see. You got any uh, explanation or understanding of why our death rate has been so much higher? Well, I think early on um, that was spurred by the fact that the death rate in Detroit uh, with its uh, minority population, particularly African-American, was so high. But if you look at the data now, um, the, the um, uh, absolute deaths in Detroit is only about 0.6 per million population. So it's gone down dramatically. I think that um, the data skewed by the, the huge amount of uh, the disproportionate uh, impact on minority populations yeah. and Detroit's large minority population early on. 
and the fact that we were hit so early as we were still trying right. to figure out uh, best practices. Um, we've me. watched, as I just mentioned with John James, and we've, we've, we've been talking about this quite a bit, the politicization of the mask seems very strange. But do you see any, uh, any reason why, um, uh, for instance, on college campuses, uh, uh, can you see not having people being asked to wear masks when they come back to school? No, that, that's going to be mandatory uh, yeah. for us. Uh, um, it, you, it, if, if you're in a, a closed uh, environment in any of our buildings, you're going to have to wear a mask, period. It's, uh, it's what's the safest thing to do. It's going to be the, it's the best practice in terms of infecting others. And so e even if, um, you know, you yourself don't feel like it's protective of yourself, right. um, you know, certainly you've got to think about others and it's just the right thing to do. K through 12 schools, of course, are very community driven, community based. And you're talking about a very small, even in some cases, just a couple of blocks worth of, uh, of where people come to school. Not the case at all with universities. You've got people that coming uh, to go to school from all over the country, all over the state, all over the country. and in other cases all over the world. What do all you do? Uh, yeah. Uh, all, what do you do about all of that influx of all of these people bringing with them all of the interactions that they've had for the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I think that there, there just has to be certain policies that everybody has to follow. You know, one of them is the mask, as we talked about. The other one is social distancing. Um, limiting the ability of students to uh, gather and, and, and certain social gatherings. Um, and, and testing and contact, contact tracing are going to be very important. You know, we're, we're going to do a lot of that as students come back on campus. Can you see everything that you know about uh, public health? Uh, can you see any way around uh, the fear that many have that come late fall, early winter, we are in for another uh, outburst, whether we want to call it the second surge or whatever it is, uh, but the way that the flu season typically works? Any way around that? You know, I've said all along from the very beginning that we're going to have a second surge. It's just a matter of when the what the timing is going to be. I predicted sometime in you know later in the fall, but I think with uh, uh, things I'm seeing right now, with uh, the surge in, in various states, um, yeah. uh, the impact perhaps of the uh, the protests, the um, the, the impact of uh, uh, most states uh, opening up, um, maybe prematurely in some cases, I think it's going to be uh, quicker. Yeah. You know, the you know most of the um, uh, the states that are having uh, major problems right now. You know, I'm talking about Arizona, uh, Florida, uh, Texas. As um, these cases have have surged about two to six weeks after opening up, and so. Um, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. Yep. I, 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 I think I, that, unfortunately um, not. I, I, I got to leave it there. I got to get to a break. But Dr. Wilson, right. so good to talk to you again, and we will talk to you again soon. Okay. See you now. Bye bye. We'll be back with more in just a minute on Flashpoint. <laughs>